Hello and welcome to this GCSE explainer on factors affecting food supply. We've already ascertained that uh, across the globe um, there are many factors that can decide whether a country has food surplus or a food deficit. Um, we saw on some of the maps that in many very low income countries there's a, a large portion of the population who live in rural areas and who suffer from undernourishment. Um, in many HICs or high income countries undernourishment is much lower. Um, so according to the Food and Agriculture Organisation of the United Nations, about 795 million people, um, or one in nine uh, of the world's population, were suffering from chronic undernourishment in 2014 through to 2016. Uh, and of almost all hungry people, 780 million, they live in developing countries, the, the low income countries. And there are, there are six factors you need to consider for... Um, what, what governs the amount of food available? The first obvious one is climate. Okay, so temperature is a critical for plant growth as all crops have a minimum temperature in which they will grow and a minimum growing season. So if you take in Britain, wheat and barley will only grow when the average temperature is above six degrees Celsius. So if you live where I do in Newcastle, um, that's probably about two months of the year. Um, you also need a decent amount of rainfall. So few crops can grow where there is less than 250 millimetres of rainfall a year. And that's the, the classification of a of a desert. Trees and fruit trees require far greater amounts. Some low income countries um, might suffer drought, well, uh, high income countries as well, but um, it might result in, in localised food shortages. So the whole of Africa, in countries like Ethiopia and Somalia, there have been droughts that can last for years, um, such as between 2011 and 2012. Okay, but those factors can affect food supplies. You can see some, some wheat on there. Uh, we can modify the climate. So there's a, a greenhouse or a glass house um, for growing tomatoes in um, in the north of England, where it's the temperature generally is quite quite cool uh, for growing that type of plant. Technology is another massively important factor. You can see a crop sprayer there. Um, we've used it for centuries to make farming easier and more productive. So high income countries. Uh, can afford to invest in combined harvesters, irrigation systems for watering, road networks to improve communications and move products. Uh, an investment in technology can make different forms of crop or pastoral farming possible, for example, using the greenhouses where they previously were not. That technology has been tried to be moved to poorer parts of the world through the Green Revolution. Um, richer nations of, of trying to spread technology through the Green Revo Revolution. I'm going to look at the, the new Green Revolution a little bit later on. Uh, and richer nations also have access to improvements in transport and storage of food. And transnational corporations process food, making it more freely available through, through things like farm to fork and vacuum packing and, and, and so on. Pests and disease are another crucial thing. Um, there are many pests that can affect crops. You know, you could think of locusts and mice and rats and, and, and things like that. Um, animals can be affected by diseases like foot and mouth, which we had in the, U the UK. Um, you know, we've had mad cow disease as well. Um, so there are lots of different things that can affect um, animals in terms of pest and disease. Many countries combat those using medicines for their animals and using pesticides and insecticides to kill to kill insects on their on their crops. Um, LICs can use those as well, but only if they have the finance available to, to, to do so. Another factor is water stress. So um, all plants need, need water. Um, animals can require quite a lot of water. So uh, if there's water stress in an area when the demand for water exceeds the available amount, um, we, we, we can suffer a reduction in the amount of crop or um, animal that is, that is produced. OK, we can adjust to that by trapping water behind dams, using irrigation systems, using groundwater pumps and things. Um, but that'll be variable between which areas can actually do that. Um, and there you can see from the uh, United Nations Water Organization, uh, 1.8 billion people will be living in countries or regions with absolute water scarcity by 2025. And then there's this factor as well. Um, conflict and poverty can have an impact on how much food is produced and, and is available. Um, in conflict areas, many farmers and their families might be forced to flee the areas and become refugees. Uh, food can be used as a weapon. Uh, armed forces uh, take the food and uh, can destroy it or steal it. Soldiers can deliberately pollute water supplies and burn crops as part of the, the battle. Um, and then, you know, that's been the case over the past decades, including conflicts in Syria, southern Sudan and, and, and so on. 
Uh, and then poverty weakens people and makes them less productive for work. Uh, so that means they can't produce as much food. So those are the, the factors that affect food supply. In terms of tasks, you could have a think about that photograph, what factors were good and how much wheat is grown and where. Have a good think about that. Um, and then you've got a table to fill out. You don't need to do how poverty and conflict increase food supply. But for all the factors, the six factors, you know, think positively. What, what, how can those things improve water supply? So if you have the absence of water stress and you combat it with irrigation and dams, that will increase the amount of food available locally. How many decrease uh, food supply as well? So that's the complete the table one. You can read this web page as well. Explain fully how conflict can result in food insecurity. I'll show you that now. Um, and then thinking about that, what can be done to help poorer countries produce more food? So think about those those problem areas. What could we do to improve them to uh, make sure people have enough food to eat, which is a basic human right? The why chain is this. So just think about conflict. Um, if you think about a chain, it's linked together. Um, the wall links to the R. Um, the crossover there, that's the area of strength in there. So we put connectives in where the where the links touch, and that'll give you a really good answer. So um, your answer uh, can go on a flowchart like that. The first reason conflict can affect food supply is, and you can pop it in the arrow. If this results in, then pop it in the next arrow. What's the consequence of that? Pop it in the next arrow, and so on. Okay, and there's some connectives there if you don't like the ones I've put in the in the circles. Okay, and then. Um, as usual, you've got a worksheet there that will help you through those tasks uh, with areas for you to type in. And uh, the web page is just at that address there, Cool Geography, and then it's CRM Food Factors Affected. Um, so uh, just a last little dad joke to finish. Um, why do zombies go to Subway? Because they like to eat flesh. Bye-bye. <laughs>